Ready? So I'm here just as a storyteller, uh, not a science teacher. So at the outset, I would thank the TEDx organizers for giving me this platform to share my ideas. Thank you so much. Uh, would you like the stories to be in Tamil or English? Both. Okay, fine. So to me, science, science is nothing but knowledge. Scientia means knowledge. So when it is science, as long as we ask why, how and what, all of us are scientists. That is, we don't need a tag that I did a B.S. physics or a B.Tech or anything. As long as we keep on asking what, why and how, you are a scientist. And to me, all of us are born scientists. All of us are born scientists, whether we belong to art or whatever we are, we are all scientists. Fine. With that, I would just like to date back slightly. What is happening? Why is that all these discoveries that we are studying are just based by, by, by Newton or Einstein or Galileo, all these foreign names or European names? Why should it, that, that, that happen? That's my only question. Have we not found anything? Let's just get back. So, let us ask, what made them invent or discover, do all these things. What is that that gave them the passion or the compulsion? What is the geographical nature that helped them or made them to do, do th these discoveries? What made Columbus to take a voyage? Because after the Columbus voyage, a lot of things changed in the entire world. So, when we teach science or when we learn science, more than I, I would say teach, as learners, let us learn science as a wholesome. So what is it all about? When we learn science, let us learn the history and geography connected with it. Only then we can appreciate it. We can appreciate science only when it is connected to history, geography, then only whatever we call, you know, the motivation that can come. But why should I do that? Why should I do that? How is it important for me? So, let us just go through few stories and let us see whether we can rethink. Because here, we are standing here with a tag beyond convention. Let us not, we need not go always against con convention. We, we are right now traveling with the convention. But my view is, let us look beyond convention. That is all. I am going with the convention right now, so I just want to look beyond it so that I can become better for the future of my society, for my own self, for my family, whatever you call it. So how am I going to do this? Now it's almost lunch time. I think all of us here, you will agree with me if I say 99% over here like potatoes. I hope so. Yes, all of us like potatoes, whether it is fryams or chips or stew, avial, togel, whatever it is, everything, we love potato. Potato has a beautiful history and let's learn science from that. Let's see the history of potato. Yes, Columbus, 1400s, 1492, he lands up, fine. It was not the first time, he went four or five times to the same place, fine. And then behind them, the Spanish people went, they started settlements slowly. Fine. What did they do? They sent whatever they saw there, whatever they saw there, whether it is minerals, whether it is plants, leaves, animals, insects, whatever you have just imported to European countries. This revolutionized the European countries, the people, that perception. Whatever comes, I would sit and research because everything has come free of cost. How many ever things you want, you can do that. Can we do it in the lab? No, we can't. Every chemical, every glassware, it all counts. But for the Europeans, at that point of time, in the 15th century, whatever was there in the new world, new world is nothing but your north and south America, whatever was there in the new world, everything was transported to the Europe and so that gave them the new perception. Please remember, look at your science books, most of the things, inventions or the laws that will be from that point, that would have started from that point, not much before. Fine, just please go back to your uh, school books and then Google again. So what is going to happen? I have so much of resource from the new world and everything I'm going to research, research, research. Why is it happening? What is this? What is, how can I use it? So when it comes, so it was one uh, Mr. Richard 
who brought all these thing, uh, potatoes to the Ireland, people of the Ireland did not want to use it. They thought uh, it is going to cause leprosy because it looks, it's a tuber which doesn't look good. And anyway, he planted it in his garden. And after that, when the gardener took it out, uh, actually the uh, plant started flowering and it gave small, small uh, fruits. Then he took it to the, uh, to the Sir Richard and he said, no, no, this is not what I saw in, uh, what is it, in the Americas. But how is the people are eating this? So let us not eat it. So the gardener dutifully dug everything and he wanted to throw it out. At that time, he found there are so much of tubers under the ground. These tubers, they were looking so much like sweet potatoes, which was already uh, eaten by the um, Ireland people. Sweet potatoes were called as batata in that language. So he called it as potato. The gardener named it as potato. And that's how the potato came. But it was okay only with Ireland. England did not accept it. The rest of the Europe did not accept it because it is not in their religious books. There is no word called as potato. Also, it was a big taboo. So when did, when did they start eating it? It was, and uh, as it went on, they were feeding, uh, they were using it to feed the pigs. That's all. It was a pig food. And later, believe me, it was uh, Louis Pasteur. You must be knowing about uh, Louis Pasteur. Okay, uh, Lavoisier. These people they were living somewhere around 17s, 1700s. So what happened was there was one uh, particular person, uh, uh, Pomantier. When you go to the uh, hotels, you can see Pomantier de soup and things. Because he was, a, he was a physician, there was nothing called as doctor or MBBS. So he was arrested by Prussia in a war. He was a physician. He was arrested and he was there in Russia for Prussia for six years in a jail. What was he fed with? With a pig food. What is it? Potato. They used to boil the potato, mash it and give him. So he understood, okay, this is not a poison. And when, we, when he came back to uh, France, once again back, he started using it with his patients and the poor people started using it but how to make it reach everybody? He invited, he gathered a big party, the royal family only, so from there, the, when the royal family came, he made a lot of dishes to them, gave it, more than that, he gave the queen a bunch of potato flowers and over. So it becomes a big fashion, so from there, people started eating, people started accepting potato. Potato is a food, but to make it accept, so he went beyond the convention, that's all. So not only that, that's a period, he was the one person, you must have heard about Edward Jenner, so who uh, star, uh, gave, found the vaccination for uh, smallpox. Actually the word vaccination he did not coin, let's go back, uh, go to it later. So it was, uh, this was the time, believe me, in the European countries, they did not have anything called as very hygienic habits. People at that point of time used to sit just around a plate, eat the food with a fork all by themselves. They would, they would have uh, many folks, but the plate was single. This is main reason why there were too many diseases at that point of time. So it was later on, slowly people started understanding, uh, understanding about germs. But who coined the word germs? Your Louis Pasteur. How did he do it? Louis Pasteur, he had the intuition that something is wrong with the system and the diseases must be spreading. But once again, the people did not accept it because they thought diseases are due to the sin that you commit in the previous birth or whatever it is. And they did not believe that the organism would cause a disease. So what he did, you know, it was so beautiful. So he, uh, it was chicken cholera at that point of time, there are many diseases. Um, people were approaching him to find some solution, especially there, was, uh, there were many wine industries all over, beer industries, so in which case the grape was becoming more and more sour as well as the milk products. The economy of uh, Europe was mainly dependent on the milk products. So the minute the milk products get become more and more sour, you know, they lose a lot of money, so they approached this gentleman and said, sir, can you please do something about it? He said, yes, I shall do. One thing is, let us boil the milk for a longer time and he brought in the process called as sterilization as well as pasteurization. Leave the boiling milk for the same temperature for some time. Now even now when you, when you take heritage milk or amul milk or whatever milk, when you read the packet, there will be a word called as pasteurization. Pasture, Louis Pasture, he gave this to the world. So he was the first person to say, see something is transmitting the diseases. 
So with, when so around somewhere 1756, and then he didn't stop that. People were actually accusing, accusing him, blaming him for propagating wrong ideas. But he, he was so bold. When chicken cholera hit the entire place, he what he did was he took the blood of the uh, chicken that was infected with the chicken cholera, made a broth, and put everything in bread slices, and then he made good chickens, that is uh, healthy ones, to eat it. After just after a single day, they died like anything. Fine. So. Okay, fine. This is normal. Every chicken is dying because of chicken cholera because that was an epidemic. Please remember, there were a lot of epidemics in European history. That's why they came with a lot of vaccinations, uh, all these hygienic methods. Otherwise, we wouldn't have had. So, slowly, these died. But do, for some reason, he just left it and he was into some other work. So, 10 days or 2 weeks, it just went on. So, the broth was still lying. It has become older. And then after that, suddenly he thought, okay, I have left that broth. Okay, I took, he took it again and left it on and poured it on few more slices of bread. And he made the chickens again, eat new chickens, the healthy ones, eat it, uh, eat it. It so happened, believe me, the chickens had fever, but in one day, they became better. This gave him an insight. See, the same broth, after 15 or 20 days, it becomes less virulent. It is not causing the same uh, effect as it was doing two weeks back. The fresh one is giving you disease, but later on it becomes less virulent. This insight, this gave him, because he asked why, how does it happen? So he started something called as vaccination. So uh, he understood that I can make the germs le less virulent and after that he made, uh, what is it, for anthrax. That was again, anthrax is uh, this is for the, uh, this is on the sheep. Again, as I told you, the entire European economy depended on the cattle. It was a big uh, trouble for them. So he took the anthrax, um, what is it, anthrax uh, um, uh, from the sheep. He took the blood and he tried to uh, grow the anthrax germs and make it less virulent and give it on few more animals. And those periods, you have to have a big show. That is, you have to call a lot of people around and then display it to the royal family. If you do it rightly, you, are, you can live. Otherwise, you will be beheaded. This was his case. And thankfully, Louis Pasteur, when he called for the experiment, he got 50 sheep. So out of it, 25 was for his test. Uh, for which, what you know he did? He just... Kaadu kutti vittrindar evargo. Ella aattu kanna pannindar, avarudai aattu kalla kaadu kutti vittrindar. And the rest, he just left it as such. And he said, these 25 sheep, I'll have it in a, I'll may, let them graze in a field where you don't have any other germs because the farmers, they did not have any knowledge. So whenever a sheep died due to anthrax, they put it in the, uh, they buried it in the, under the soil. So that created the soil, from the soil, the germs or the worms came out and that infected more and more sheep. So when he realized this, he, he had a properly, um, what is it, maintained, field and these sheep were there and believe me after he gave uh, this vaccination uh, like we give uh, polio boosters he gave it uh, give the shot he gave the shots every week and after one month that was the day when he had to uh, tell the entire uh, uh, royal family about this so all of them are there and there were people from England also England and France, they were always um, having fights between each other on the de uh, uh, scientific developments. So people from England were also there. A lot of press people were, were there. He brought in the anthra. So these are, so he has now 25 sheep which have got vaccination. 25 sheep which are not vaccinated. Now he is going to bring anthrax uh, uh, germs and then give them a shot uh, of anthrax. It so happens in a day, those which did not have vaccination, they all died, but the rest which were vaccinated, they lived forever happily. So in which case, he understood, okay, fine, this is the case, and then only your vaccinations came. And your vaccination, have you ever thought about this word? Vaku means word, which emanates. So similarly, in Latin, vac means vac, V-A-C, it also means something comes out. From the um, cow, the milk comes out. So, cow is called as vac in Latin. So, Edward Jenner, he in first invented 
this uh, process of immunization only from the cow. From the cow pox, he gave the vaccination to the smallpox. So, it has come out of the cow. So, Louis Pasteur wanted to honor Edward Jenner. So, he kept the name vaccination to honor the whom? Uh, to honor the Ed, uh, Edward Jenner and he kept the name as vaccination. So, once you start learning your science along with history and the geography, what made them, I think we can just move forward and we need not always say uh, E equal to mc squared and f is equal to ma is only physics or it is only science. Science is in us and it is we who are going to you know, develop more and more and create passion for it. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you so much.